questions, three answers. Let's get to it. And it's an Anime God 500 Rebirth Special. How do you do it? His first question, which two Jerry Anderson shows do you think deserve a crossover? I've been kind of waiting for a question like this. I want to see what would happen if Thunderbirds did a crossover with Stingray. Like, you know, I know one, uh, I forget the username on YouTube, but he has done this crossover where it's taking clips from Rescue from the Skies, where Stingray suffers an explosion during a test on the ocean bed, and they call out International Rescue to basically help Stingray get off the ocean bed and then back to service, and that was taking clips from the man from MI5, and it was done so seamlessly, and it looked and thought, that could work, because Thunderbird, you know, because Thunderbirds being international rescue, they go and help somebody in need, and, you know, it's very rare when Stingray has needed help, with the exception of the pilot episode when it was shot down by a mechanical fish, um, I'd say, Rescue from the Skies, and the only other time was the master plan, where they had the the plan to poison Troy Tempest in order to get Marina back and then Titan sent the antidote to Marineville as a means of saying well we've given you the you've given us Marina we'll give you the antidote and then eventually I'll get Troy Tempest as my prisoner and Stingray as my royal yacht which never happened so yeah the only other one I might like to see is Stingray crossed over Captain Scarlet you know two mili you know military type organizations working with each other I know they did something similar in the Captain Scarlet comic where uh, the Wasps were brought in and then the organization from Fireball XL5 were brought in because Captain Scarlet was not only taken from an island using a Stingray-like vehicle but then was taken into outer space and had Fireball XL7 come rescue him. And if you ever, ever happen to find that story, give it a look. Question two, going by the trailer, what are your thoughts on the upcoming Deadpool movie? <laughs> oh, we have been waiting for this. You know, since X-Men Origins Wolverine, we've had a sliver of Wade Wilson. You know, Ryan Reynolds was just pure grade A awesome gold as Wade Wilson, because you couldn't get the guy to shut up, but as for that thing that was supposed to be Deadpool in that, we don't acknowledge that. Um, and based upon what I've seen with the trailer, it's nice when studios start actually listening to the fans about what we want. And in that trailer alone, that trailer alone was more awesome than Deadpool's appearance in X-Men Origins Wolverine. Because Ryan Reynolds was born to play Deadpool, first and foremost. And I like the fact that he had little digs at Green Lantern by saying, please don't make the super suit green or animate it. And it's just Deadpool being Deadpool. Ugh. I'll say this much. I think that is going to be the superhero movie of next year. Batman v Superman is going to be huge already for the fact that we're finally seeing Batman and Superman take each other on the world on the silver screen. And by the way, that should be called World's Finest, not Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Just keep it as World's Finest because that's what we know it as. And then of course we've also got Captain America Civil War, which should be very intriguing, and the possible first appearance of Spider-Man as well. So that will, will be intriguing. And of course Ant-Man's evidently going to be part of uh, the anti, you know, uh, registration act. So I'm going to be intrigued to see how this will go. Uh, and his third question. If there's any hope for Sonic Boom, even though doubtful at this point, everyone's agreeing with you. What do you think it should do to become watchable again? Hmm. 
Well, first of all, I think they just need to actually get some competent writers. Uh, and they're... The cast, I don't have any issues with, because Roger Craig Smith, you know, he has made his version of Sonic his own. I'm still a Jill White guy. You know, I love, you know, I still dig um, the guy's performance 20 years later after Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog and Satam. Sonic Underground's a guilty pleasure, but it's still better than Sonic Boom at this point. Um, but Rogers, like I say, he's made Sonic's role his own. He's snassy, sassy, excuse me, quirky, says what's on his mind. He's kind of like the CM Punk of the Sonic world. The only difference is when Sonic drops pipe bombs, he destroys badniks in the process, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Mike Pollock is first class as first class as Robotnik. Cindy Robertson's portrayal of Amy. This is the best version of Amy Rose to this day because she's. They've actually made a decent character out of her, rather than be like obsessive, be an obsessive fangirl for Sonic. I mean. Yeah, in this she still has eyes for Sonic, but she sees through the BS and whatnot and just calls it for this. Maybe, ooh, Sonic ooh, yeah! and all that creepy stuff. I mean, prime example. Look at Sonic Adventure One in '99. Sees Sonic outside Casinoopolis, goes chasing after him. End of Sonic Heroes uh, missions for for Team Sonic and Team Rose, chasing after him instantly. Or. When Tails rescues her from Robotnik in Metal Harbor in Sonic Adventure 2, he goes, I know, but I'm here to rescue my hero, Sonic! And Tails is saying, we're all thinking, AGAIN?! So, character-wise, the way that they're written, and the way that the characters are actually giving their deliveries, and the way that the, you know, that they go about adding the little quirks, no problems, it's just the stories they seemingly get worse. I mean, I think after episode 10 or 12, you know, particularly when I saw things like Groundhog Day uh, template being used, I'm like, we're really going there with this? Or the swapping bodies. I did like the the uh, Knuckles from Another Dimension where he's so, you know, the antithesis of what, the, you know, the Knuckles is in this one. I mean, this, the one from an alternate dimension is intelligent, he's very self-aware, he's, you know, I wouldn't say whimsical, but he's got more of a comedic side where he understands the jokes and is not the butt of the joke, and that is a thing that needs to change with Knuckles the Echidna going further, either in Sonic Boom or any other incarnation in the Sonic franchise, make Knuckles, you know, intelligent yet naive again. The whole stupid thing, and particularly in the Sonic Boom game where you can't tell left from right, I'm like, this is not the character that debuted in the first quarter of 1994, where, you know, the, the guy was just naive, he wasn't stupid. There's a difference between being, um, you know, e easy to lead on but still understand what goes on afterwards, and a guy who just doesn't have a clue. I mean, when this stood, with Knuckles' origin, he was alone on that island for all of his life. He's had no contact with the outside world until Robotnik, Sonic, and Tails came along. He doesn't know how things work on the outside world, you know, outside of the island, so he, therefore he's very naive. With this one, he's just a grade-A dumbass! And that's not the Knuckles I want! So that'd be the major thing. Get Knuckles to be, you know, either a little bit more intelligent, probably on, well, not necessarily Tails' level, but just be able to be at the level he was at in Sonic Underground. That was one of the few things that show got right. I actually enjoyed Knuckles' uh, portrait, you know, incarnation there, except he couldn't glide. He could dig and climb walls, but he couldn't glide. Kind of, uh, not sure about that. But yeah, definitely restructure the story so that, you know, the comedy on there makes sense, but it's not trying to be, you know, like where they're going either trying too hard or not trying hard enough. They need to find that balance. And right now, ugh, need I go on? 
And here's... Oh, yeah, that was the third and final question. So, you know the shtick by now. If you're watching this on YT or DynamicNight.com, question in the comments section below, or tweet a link to my Twitter link in the outro. But until then, ask again. <laughs>